This is one of my all time favorite things to teach because it can have a massive impact on the way you sound in a very short period of time. Today, we're going to talk about jazz articulations, and I'm going to show you how you can take a boring, bland line that sounds like this. and transform it into a jazz phrase that has a lot of shape and direction and sounds like this. And the best part is that there is a free PDF download that you can practice and play along with. The link to the free PDF is in the video description below, so make sure that you download that and check it out. When it comes to jazz articulation, there are some unwritten rules that are actually pretty easy to follow. And once you learn and recognize these unwritten rules of jazz articulations, it's going to completely transform the way you interpret music when you're playing or reading it. So I want you to say this as your mantra. Great sounding melodies, solos and phrases are all about dynamics and articulations. Dynamics and articulations are super important when it comes to sounding great on the saxophone. Once you figure that out, everything else will fall into place. So let's get started. In this tutorial, we are going to learn the first eight measures of a jazz etude that I wrote for the jazz style section of my sax school, where I teach the unwritten rules of jazz articulation. With these eight measures, I'm going to show you step by step how to use these articulations to shape your musical phrases. Now let's break down these first four measures. This is what it sounds like when you swing the eighth notes, but you don't add in any of the unwritten articulations that you need to add in to make the phrase sound good. Take a listen. The notes are right, the swing eighth notes are right, but it just doesn't have a feel. It doesn't move forward. Now this is what it sounds like when I add in some articulations and shape the phrase. As you can hear, that sounds a whole lot better. So let's talk about some of these unwritten rules. Take a listen to this first measure without the articulations. When I play it like that, the phrase just sits there. So the very first thing I want to do is whenever you have a quarter note on the beat, you want to dop it. A dop is what I call a marcato, which is one of those things, which is a fat, squatty sounding staccato. You want that fat note, it's going to give it a lot more presence. So you're going to dop a quarter note on the beat. And then if you look at the and of three, we have that A that has an accent on it. When you have a quarter note on the and of the beat, you're going to accent it. So the difference between a dop and an accent is a dop has some space around it. It's short and fat, but an accent is full value. You just hit it hard and hold it. That already sounds a whole lot better than And all we did was just add in a dop and an accent. Take a listen to the second measure without the articulations. Sounds okay, but no direction. Now take a listen with the articulations and then I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm doing is that G sharp on the end of two. We're jumping down to that note. So that line is going up. You have the E, G sharp, B, then that G sharp that jumps down, and then the D. So those notes are going up. So what I'm going to do with that G sharp when I jump down is I'm going to ghost that note. All that means is I'm going to pull it back so that it doesn't have as much power. So that G sharp is just kind of setting up the D. So I'm going to pull that back and it's going to make the phrase sound a whole lot better. You hear that? Now, if I don't pull it back, 
it just sounds and feels a little clunky. So when you have a larger interval that jumps down in the middle of an ascending line, you wanna make sure you pull back the note that jumps down. Now at the end of that phrase, we have the A on beat one of measure three. That is a quarter note on the beat. So of course we are gonna dop that. Now, if you look at the note just before that, the B that is on the end of four, you can see that I have a little line on it. So the reason I put that line on that note is because I wanna bring that note out a little bit. I'm not gonna accent it. I just wanna lean into it a little bit. There is no articulation that says lean into a note, but don't accent it. So I put lines on those type of notes. So take a listen to what happens when I lean into that B, play it just a little bit stronger and then dop that A on beat one. You can hear how it adds power to the A. Bringing out that B makes the A sound better. I'm gonna play it one more time and this time I'm not gonna bring out the B. It just sounds and feels weird. So what is going on there is we have an enclosure. We have G sharp, B, and the target note of A. But we also have an ascending line that is changing direction. So we're going up and then back down. Whenever you change direction, when you're going up and then you go back down, you wanna bring something out. Now that quarter note on the beat, the A, is automatically gonna come out because it's a dop on beat one. But you also generally are gonna need something else to set it up. And that's exactly what that B does. Now, when you have that uh, change in direction, it's not always gonna be the top note. It might be the note before it. So this is what it sounds like if I bring out the G sharp. That doesn't sound terrible, but it doesn't sound that great. Now, if I bring out the B, that adds more power to the A and it sounds really good. Take a listen to the first two measures. Now take a listen to this third measure. I'm gonna go ahead and play it with the articulations that are written in. Now there's something I should probably explain. I call those marcados, those quarter notes on the beat, dops, because that's what it sounds like, dop. I oftentimes will call articulations by the way they sound. It just makes a lot of sense to me. So we're gonna dop that A on beat one. And now if you look on the and of four, we have a quarter note on the and of the beat. Earlier in this lesson, in measure one, we talked about when you have a quarter note on the and of the beat, you're gonna accent it, not dop it. Now there's something that is very, very, very important about the unwritten rules of articulation. And that is that they are never 100%, just like anything else in music, it all depends on what's going on around it. So we have two quarter notes on the and of the beat next to each other. We have that D on the and of three. Earlier, I think I said it was on the and of four, it's on the and of three. And then we have the G on the and of four. So because we have those quarter notes on the end of the beat, back to back, we have to do something a little bit different to make it sound better. So this is what it sounds like if I dop the first one and accent the second one. That sounds really good. If I accent both of them, that doesn't sound bad. If someone played it that way, no one would like throw tomatoes or anything, but it doesn't sound nearly as good as if you dop it. When you dop it, it sets up that G. So what you wanna think about when it comes to these articulations is how the notes are going together. So that D obviously belongs to the G, and I call that kind of interaction between the D and the G, where the D is really setting up the G, a ricochet note. So I'm dopping that D and then it ricochets into the G. They belong to the, together. The D is setting up that G, it ricochets into the G. Listen to it one more time. Now, listen from the beginning. Now let's talk about measure four. After that accent on the and of four in measure three, we jump up to the high D. 
Now, I didn't write this in because it's just going to automatically happen. Whenever you have a larger interval that jumps up to a higher note, you're almost always gonna bring that note out. It's always gonna be louder and stronger. It's gonna be one of your goal notes. So goal notes are the more important notes that you bring out that are gonna shape the phrase. That's what those dops are. That's what the accents are. They're your main notes in the phrase that are helping you to shape it with more direction. So whenever you're jumping to a larger interval, it's just gonna kinda come out louder and stronger no matter what you do. So I don't always write in the articulations for that. After I play the high D, which I'm definitely gonna bring out, I have a descending line. Now we're not really gonna do anything with the articulations on a descending line, but whenever you have a really big descending line, generally you're gonna decrescendo, you're gonna get softer as you go down. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do on this descending line. Take a listen to the first four measures. If you'd like to go deeper into the world of jazz articulations and jazz style, then I'd like to invite you to check out my sax school, the Scott Paddock Sax School. In the sax school, I have an entire section that is made up of six different jazz etudes similar to this. And in each one, I teach and reinforce all of the rules, the unwritten rules of jazz articulation. This is one of those things that when you work through it over a month or two, you are gonna hear a massive improvement in the way you sound, the way you phrase, the way you shape everything that you're playing. And these etudes are a ton of fun to work on. So if this sounds like something you're into, stop by the Scott Paddock Sax School. There is a link in the video description below. From there, we go on to the second line. So starting on measure five, that is the exact same as the first measure, just with some different notes. So we are gonna use the same articulations. In the second measure, we are jumping from the D up to the G sharp down to the E. So because I have a larger interval jump, that D to the G sharp, I'm gonna bring out that G sharp. It also happens to be a direction change note. So that's another reason, reason to bring it out. Then we have a long note on the end of the beat. So that E is a long note on the end of the beat. Whenever you have a long note on the end of the beat, you are going to accent it. You're gonna bring that note out and make it stronger. Take a listen to measure six. From there on beat four, we play from the D to the A. Now, again, we have another quarter note that is on the end of the beat. And I want you to listen to how the E and the A belong to each other. They're both on the longer notes on the end of the beat. And again, this is what I call a ricochet note. So I'm gonna accent that E and it's gonna ricochet into the A. You hear how the E belongs to the A? When it comes to articulations, you really need to pay attention to how these notes are going together. Take a listen from the beginning of measure five. Sounds pretty good, right? Now, measure seven. We have a descending line that ends with a quarter note on the beat. Of course, we are gonna dop that note. And then on the and of four, you have that F sharp, which is a quarter note on the and of the beat. So we are gonna accent that. Dop the quarter notes on the beat, accent the long notes, especially quarter notes that are on the and of the beat. Again, you can hear how those notes go together as well. Then in measure eight, we have a descending line that ends with a long note, a dotted quarter note on the end of the beat. So of course, we are gonna bring that note out as well. Take a listen from measure five. That line has so much shape and so much direction to it because of the articulations that I'm using. If I don't use those articulations, it just sits there and sounds dead and flat. That just does not sound good at all. 
So you want to use your articulations to shape your phrase. It's going to give it direction. It's going to make the notes bounce off of each other. And you're going to hear the interaction between the different notes in the phrase. It's super important to use your dynamics and articulations to shape the phrase. So a really easy way to transform the way everything you play sounds is to pay really close attention to your articulations and learn and work on the unwritten rules of jazz articulation. It's one of those things that can completely transform your sound very quickly in a matter of a month or two as you work your way through it. And the reason that this is so effective is because once you start working on these concepts, that's just the way you're going to hear music eventually, and actually pretty quickly, you're not even going to have to think about dopping the quarter note on the beat or accenting the quarter note on the end of the beat or ghosting the note, the low note that you're jumping to. That's just going to be the way that you hear music. So when you're playing a melody or playing a phrase or playing a solo, that's the way you're going to articulate and shape your phrase because that's what you've been practicing and that's what you've been learning. So this is one of those concepts. This is one of those things that can really transform your sound very quickly. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, please come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School.